story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello there, you're welcome to the News at 4 with me, Sabena Izuku. Students of the Lagos State University, Lhasa, can now heave a sign of relief as Governor Babatunde Fashola orders the management of the school to revert to old school fees. The institution, having the last nine months, witnessed students and lecturers protest over the increment in school fees and other sundry charges. The decision of the Lagos State Government to run the university with the old school fees is coming on the heels of several reconciliatory committees and mediating bodies report recommendations which were in opposition to the new fees, described as taking high education away from the rich of the poor. The political atmosphere in Oshun State can be described as enthusiastic over the forthcoming governorship election. Candidates of the All Progressive Congress, the People's Democratic Party and the Labour Party have been described as the big contenders. Franco Malapé filed in this report from Oshubo. The Oshun State governorship election has attracted attention from all politicians in Nigeria. Residents of Oshu are also looking forward to the election. It's going to be a tight election and you know um, um, I can't really say who's going to win and whoever I want to vote for is behind as is in my mind so I can't really say all I know is I'll cast my foot as a is a civil ref responsibility I have my card with me so I will because I, will, I must go and I employ my I, I employ my people to go and vote because this is your power. Your vote is your power. If you didn't vote, you will regret and you will blame yourself. I believe every individual they know who they really want to vote for, you know, and uh, every citizen knows their rights. So I believe anybody who wants to vote for is in individual's mind. So, and I know people know the right thing. Analysts have dissected the strongholds of each candidate based on their constituencies and senatorial districts. The incumbent governor and APC candidate, Ralph Arabashala, will be counting on his achievements in office to win the election. For Labour Party candidate Fataya Kibadi, this will be his fourth attempt at Oshu governorship. In the case of Alaji Akibade, the confidence is there because people are really yearning to come out and vote for me. So I'm very confident that I will still make it. In your law, missionary of the People's Democratic Party is an electrical engineer. He says he's confident of unseating the incumbent governor. The point is that uh, when I go to war, I will say to win. When I go to battle, I will say to take slips. So this one I'm going to, I'm certain, by the of God, I'm going to win election. So the hypothetical question doesn't really apply to me. So maybe you can ask the APC or any other party that question, whether they will accept defeat and congratulate me. Coincidentally, the APC candidate Raul Farag Beshola and PDP Zinola Mishra from the same senatorial district. The two candidates will have to share the votes from the Oshun East. Well, the big contenders include Labour Party, the PDP and the APC. An effort has been put in place by all these political parties to ensure victory in the coming election. Frank Malafe, Core TV News, Oshobo. The People's Democratic Party has described threats by the All Progressive Congress to set up a parallel government if the 2015 presidential election is rigged as a ploy to destabilize the country. PDP spokesman Ulisa Metu said at a news conference in Abuja that the threat is a confirmation of his position on the opposition party. He also insists that it proves that the APC is more keen on destabilizing the country. This therefore explains why they have been making inflammatory statements and publishing negative advertorials and articles 
in local and international media to incite Nigerians, embolden insurgents, and stir hatred and division among the populace while balkanizing the nation along its fault lines. All the pocket of anti-government protests and calls for civil disobedience in parts of the country bear the imprint of the APC and are geared towards cultivating a fertile ground for them to unleash a reign of terror across the country. The importation of talks to cause confusion in most of the elections we've had, including in Anambra, Ikiti, and now Oshu State, is all part of the plot to discredit the electoral system and truncate the 2015 elections. The Independent National Electoral Commission says the commission will ensure a transparent election in August 9th governorship election in Oshun State. INEC made the commitment at the stakeholders' meeting on the governorship election. Frank Omalape was there and filed in this report. Present at the stakeholders' meeting is the INEC chairman, Atahir Jega, royal fathers, party candidates, and security agencies. The stakeholders' meeting addressed some issues that are usually associated with the election processes. Some of the issues raised is late arrival of materials and electoral offenses committed by party members and agents. Alec Chairman Atahir Jega says the commission is working to ensure that OSHA governorship poll is tagged as one of the best in recent times. August 9th election, we will do our best to ensure a level playing field for every candidate, for every party, for every contestant. We will be non-partial, we will be non-partisan, we will be impartial, and we have required all our staff to do so. And uh, God willing, it will come to pass. Jigal also sued for peace among all political parties and stakeholders in the coming poll. We still have serious concerns related to thuggery, and other untoward activities on election day. But the challenges are still there, and we must not rest on our oars in trying to ensure that elections are conducted peacefully under an atmosphere which will enable voters to come out and exercise their civic duties. On his part, the acting Inspector General of Police, Suleiman Abba, says, he is working with all necessary security agencies to ensure a peaceful conduct. We will also ensure that the over 1.4 million voters in the state have the free atmosphere and conducive environment to go and exercise their civil rights that day. The meeting took another turn when an APC chieftain says he will ensure he protects his voting sleep by taking a picture of it. The ANEC chairman, however, condemned the act, saying it is illegal. When you give me my ballot, it is my ballot as a citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And when I take the picture, I do not interfere with the Conclusion of stakeholders' meetings ahead of the Saturday's election. All stages now set for what analysts describe as a historic election that might change the trend of politics in Oshun State. Frank Omalape, Hot TV News. Oshun. The acting Inspector General of Police, Suleiman Abai, is facing his first involvement in Nigeria's election as the number one policeman in the country. 
within the Oshun State Command ahead of the Oshun governorship election are but charges men of the police force to discharge the duties diligently and be civil enough or face tough sanctions. Rashid Rashid has the details. The Inspector General of Police, Laiman Aba, led all the top brass of the police to the state's police command to charge the police drawn across the country ahead of the August 9th election. Ibrahim received in a warm welcome in what happens to be his first official election outing. Abba with the grin on his face admonishes the police to be civil in the discharge of their duties during the election. I want you to be mindful of the fact that someone can easily deceive you. He can why? Before you know it, you go and commit an offense. In fact, the election cannot be fair, the election cannot be free. Therefore, if you see anybody trying to disrupt the election, arrest him. The 17th Indigenous Inspector General vowed to deal with any police caught in the act of corruption. Anyone engage, who engages in any of the things I said, or he helps any of the political party or anybody to commit other offenses, including you assist someone to carry arms, or you assist someone to display his party logo. And the problem is that, let me tell you where the problem is. It is not just where you are doing the work. If you do it within 300 meters radius of that polling unit, the law will catch up with you. Abba, however, assured the highly motivated policemen of proper welfare during and after the election, promising to give a new face to the police in Nigeria. Things that make you earn commendation when you go out to perform, those things that make you perform excellently there, he will make sure that they are here. So the Nigerian police have been congratulated for their professional role in the Ekiti election and Nigerians are looking forward for a repeat of the feat in Osho. Rashid Rashid, Paul TV News, Osho. And away from that to judicial matters, former Deputy Governor of Adamawa State, Bala Ingilari, has asked the Federal High Court in Abuja to order that he be sworn in as the Governor of the state and to stop the Independent National Electric Commission, INEC, from conducting a fresh election for the new Governor in the state. In an originating summon filed on behalf by Festus Kiyamu, Ingilari says, his purported resignation in the wake of the impeachment exercise that led to the removal of Murita Yanko as governor was null and void. He therefore asked the court to issue an order removing Amadou Umaru as the acting governor of Adamawa State forthwith. His argument is that he did not resign as stipulated by Section 306, 1, 2 and 5 of the 1999 Constitution. According to Ingilari, if he is sworn in as governor of Adamawa State, there will be no need to conduct a by-election. He asked the court to hold that by the combined provision of the section 306, 1, 2 and 5 of the Constitution as Deputy Governor of Adamawa State, he did not resign his office by addressing a letter of resignation dated 15 July 2014 to the Speaker of the State House of Assembly. He also asked the court to declare that by the combined provision of the section 306, 1, 2 and 5 of the 99 Constitution, his purported resignation as Deputy Governor of the Adamawa State did not take effect when the purported letter of resignation was received by the Speaker on July 15th. The Nassau State House of Assembly has rejected the verdict of the seven-man panel that dismissed its allegations against the Governor Tanko al Makura. The chairman of the House Committee on Information and Security, Baba Ibaku, says there was no going back on the impeachment move against the governor. He said the panel set up by the chief judge, Umaru Diku, to investigate the 16-count charge against the governor breach section 18A subsection 5 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended. It therefore described the sitting of the panel as illegal. Ibaku said the lawmakers did not know whether there was any sitting of the panel on Tuesday or not. Ibaku said the governor, Al Makura, has been using the instruments of state powers to the disservice of the people. 
Security has been strengthened in Latvia, the Nasara state capital, ahead of a planned protest by members of the PDP, People's Democratic Party. The road leading to the government house is most affected, with a combined team of security forces stationed at a strategic position. One of the security personnel told Court TV News off camera that there was an intelligence report of plans by the PDP members to register their displeasure over the outcome of the impeachment panel, declared Governor Tanko. Al Makura. And over to health matters, the federal government is moving to collaborate with state and local authorities in a bid to check the spread of Ebola virus disease in the country. Information Minister Labaro Marco told journalists after the Federal Executive Council meeting that the government wants states to take preventive measures against the virus. The meeting also considered a national response to the disease, which has now claimed its first Nigerian victim. They must not wait until it comes into their borders. Every precautionary measure that should be taken by all the 36 states and the FCT must be taken. And one of such measures is to create the isolation camps in partnership with the Federal Minister of Health under the leadership of the Federal Minister of Health. In addition to preparing the personal protective equipment you know, for health workers, and also um, to prepare the medical personnel in every state and set up units where we should prepare for any uh, outbreak. Uh, the state governments have been told to create their own committees made up by the federal ministries of, of uh, by the state ministers of health, ministers of information, and other major uh, stakeholders. As at this morning. Nigeria has recorded seven confirmed cases of Ebola virus disease as of this morning. You recall that the first one was the index case, the imported case from Liberia, of which the victim is now late. And yesterday, the 5th of August 2014, the first known Nigerian to die of this disease was recorded. And this was one of the nurses that had attended to the Liberian. The other five cases that are Ebola positive are currently being treated at the isolation ward in Lagos. It is pertinent to note that all the Nigerians that have been diagnosed of this disease, the Ebola virus disease so far, we actually primary contacts of the index case. These are people who had direct contacts with the Liberian. And there are still more of such people. Presently, as I speak, a total of eight persons are in the isolation ward, of which five have already been confirmed as Ebola, and the other three are being investigated. The Lagos State Ministry of Health says it is searching for other people who had secondary contacts with the victims of the Ebola virus in Lagos. Anita Fatunji has the details. The Commissioner for Health, Jude Idris, gave an update on the contact tracing arising from the index case of the dead Liberian. He said a total of 70 persons were monitored, but eight has been admitted and their blood samples taken. Well, we don't want to appear to be having your bad news. But there are certain things we need to do if we have to do such. You recollect again yesterday when we briefed you, and some people said that maybe we were holding information, and I said we were not holding information. This is just another update, because in the last 24 hours, there have been other developments. Like I did say again, based on the contract tracing, arising from the index case that came into the country, that is the Liberian. We have been following up a total of 70 persons who have been primary contacts to that person. That is monitoring. Of these, currently, eight have been admitted and blood samples taken. Results of five out of the eight samples taken have been received 
with four out of the five testing positive for Ebola. The results of the three are outstanding. Regrettably, too, one of the eight persons admitted died yesterday at 2.06 p.m., thus making deaths recorded on account of the Ebola outbreak in Lagos to amount to two, that is yesterday's and the index case. Meanwhile, because of this, like I did say again, we've started secondary contact tracing. And I said this is also a tedious matter, but you have to take each one now and start finding out who are the people who uh, could be possibly secondarily infected. That is the close contacts of all admitted, of those admitted. We've started that, and as at now, and as at yesterday, 27 of them have been identified, and we are still counting. It is added that more volunteers are urgently needed to curb the spread of the virus. You, re you agree with me that this situation is very dire, a very serious one. And more important, like I said yesterday, we need volunteers now. Very extremely necessary, urgently needed, to assist us in tracking the contacts, and more importantly, to manage those cases that are already in isolation. If we want to give them a chance for life, they need to be properly managed. So we need doctors, we need nurses, environmental health workers, phlebotomists, etc., like we said yesterday. He appealed to the striking doctors to return to work and help stop the spread. Idris revealed that the federal and Lagos state governments may introduce painstaking measures to help curtail the virus. Anita Fatunji, Core TV News, Lagos. Still on health matters, governor from southwestern parts of the country have appealed to the striking resident doctors to end their industrial action and join in the fight against the spread of Ebola disease. The governor's called for a collaborative effort for all stakeholders to police all illegal borders leading into the country. They also enjoy Nigerians to pay more attention to personal hygiene in order to prevent the transmission of the virus. What we must do more of, like hand washing, sanitation, and what we must do less of on hygienic and transmission practices. Large gatherings are things we must begin to rethink if we are not sure what the health conditions of those people are. Uh, there, there, there may be need to review our consumption of meat if we are not sure of where the source of the meat is from. We also have to review our cultural and religious beliefs about disposal of corpses. People should not be buried at home. People should not be buried in their backyard. We need to know why people die before they are buried. Everybody should know uh, that those who aid and abet illegal entry into Nigeria now could be um, up to something that would be very dangerous to the health of the country. So we out there must also, all Nigerians, we are joining villages, everybody, we must be stakeholders in combating this new challenge that we have as a nation is very important for that message to also go out. Our call on the enemy to on purely humanitarian ground. We don't want to deal with the details of what's responsible for the ongoing strike, but we're faced with a major challenge, which is an emergency in the country. An enemy would do well to exercise that aspect of their training as doctors, that Hippocratic oath uh, that they've sworn to in order to help arrest this uh, 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 emergency that uh, we're dealing with. The new global head of the Red Cross, El Haj Asay, says that the world must learn from the fight against AIDS to help beat the deadliest ever outbreak of Ebola. While strict measures are needed to defeat Ebola in West Africa, this hang out blame will not help, says Elijah Asay, chief of the International Federation of the Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies. Mental lesson to be uh, driven uh, out of uh, the 
response to HIV, tuberculosis, and malaria, and could be applied uh, to the Ebola crisis is the simple fact that commun communities are part of the solution. And they are not, shouldn't be seen as a problem, but as a true part of the solution. Stigma and discrimination you know, often uh, kill as much as viruses because uh, there's a self-stigma where then people will drive themselves underground and then they have symptoms they will not appear because they fear that they will be then uh, discriminated against. There's also the attitude you know, that also can uh, uh, take away you know, people, uh, carers and uh, care providers. And then you know, the society at large, you know, how they can perceive you know, those kind of uh, diseases. I don't, know yet, I don't know if it is going to be a global threat you know, or not, but the uh, fact of the matter is that we are living in a global world today. And then whatever is happening you know, in part of our globe you know, may be of concern of the entirety you know, of uh, our planet. Ebola may be new in West Africa, but it is not new. So uh, we are engaging already with those who had an experience with dealing with it in uh, actual Congo, Zenzair, and we will learn you know, from all those experiences. We also will uh, work with uh, uh, institutions that are specialized you know, in tropical diseases and uh, such type of uh, crisis on how can we best equip you know, the medical personnel to take care of their own duties without putting themselves you know, at risk. And even you know, the Red Cross and the present people who have to be engaging in those type of activities will not be allowed you know, to get in without proper equipment, proper training, and strict observance you know, of the attitudes and behaviors. With those measures, we do believe you know, that we can take care of the situation. Troops from the United Nations mission in South Sudan expected to continue to evacuation from Bunj in the Upper Nile states. Find out more after the break. On August 9, the people of Oshim will head to the polls. Who will emerge the next governor of Oshim state? I'm the legitimate authority to command this state. 20 candidates are hoping for the mantle. The is not the problem, but because of God. But only the people have the power to decide. These are my people who will vote en masse for Omishori. Join Call TV News for an extensive live coverage of the elections, interviews, studio discussions, and more. Live on August 9, 2014. You can also watch us live online at www.calltvnews.com. Call TV News. A 24 hours news station. Welcome back. The United Nations peacekeeper have evacuated 220 staff and eight workers from the northeast South Sudan after militias killed at least six relief workers. The troops from the United Nations mission in South Sudan are expected to continue evacuation from Bunch and the Upper Nile state, where a local militia, the Mambanis Defense Forces, were blamed for the killings. The violence in Upper Nile state came as South Sudan is facing what the United Nations has said is the worst food crisis in the world and Ethiopian brokered peace talks between rival factions are yet to yield concrete results. The United Nations Security Council expressed outrage at the violence and warned that the attacks on the humanitarian personnel may constitute a war crime. And that's it on the news on the hour. Please do join us at the top of the hour for more. I am Sabana Izoku and thank you very much indeed for watching.